In my previous video, I showed you how to use the Smith chart to determine whether the reactive component of a complex impedance reported by something like an MFJ259 is either inductive or capacitive or positive or negative by plotting each polarity of X and then figuring out which one of those uh, curves traces out a clockwise path as the frequency increases. Now there is one situation where this method could prove a little tricky and just requires a little attention when you're collecting data. And that's when you happen to pick a frequency set of points that crosses the real axis. It maybe it crosses over in this direction like that. In which case the real values of the imaginary component might be positive and negative within the same data set that you collect. So you just have to take a little bit of care when you're taking the measurements. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Right, so I've placed a different load on uh, my analyzer here. And let's take these three frequency range readings at 3.5 megahertz, R is 28, and my uh, reactive component is 6. Let's go up to 3.7. You'll notice right at around 3.7, the X value gets very close to zero, or actually is zero, but uh, really, really close. So let's actually plot that as, say, 35 and 1. And then let's go up to 3.9 megahertz. And 3.9 gives us, let's see, right about there, 49 and 11. Okay, now you'll notice that uh, the X value went from you know, some value down very close to zero and then back up again. And that's going to be now your indication that you may have changed polarities between one end or the other. Now this one could be plus or minus, but it's so close to zero that it probably doesn't matter. So when you're taking your measurements, you want to take uh, pay careful attention to you know, if between some of your values the, we actually cross through a, a lower value and then come back up again. That may be your indication that you've changed polarity from one end to the other. Well, I've finished normalizing these values, so, but the x values that we're going to plot, uh, we're going to try and take into account that polarity change that we suspect is happening. So what we'll do is we'll make the two plots, but say this one with a plus value and this one with minus and minus, and then do this one as a minus value, and this guy is a positive and positive. So these two sets of the x value are what we're going to plot on the Smith chart, and then see which one of those gives us the clockwise curve as the frequency increases. Okay, so here are those plotted values. I used a circle symbol for this set here, and that's these points right here. And then we traced that curve out. And then the, I used a square symbol to plot uh, this set of polarities going that direction. And we can see that this one here is slightly curved in that direction. This is the one that's tracing out the clockwise curve as the frequency is increased. So this set is the right set, and the circle value is not the right set. Let's verify that on the analyzer. Okay, I'm going to sweep the same frequency range, 3.5, 3.7, 3.9. So that's what this is going to define here. And we'll just plot the Smith chart out. And yes, indeed, that's plotting the same curve that we saw in the Smith chart going from capacitive to inductive. And that's the curve that we verified right here with our uh, plots. Okay, so the bottom line here is when you're taking the measurements of the complex impedance using an analyzer that doesn't give you polarity, take note of what the X value is doing as you're increasing the frequency. And if it looks like it dips down and possibly goes through zero and then comes back up again, take that into account when you put your plots together and then you can determine the proper polarity uh, of the uh, reactive component and the design your matching network accordingly. Of course, there is the possibility that you're going to collect data on a portion of a curve that comes down to but doesn't cross the real axis. And that's not going to occur very often, and you can always take a couple of more measurement points on either side and frequency to kind of see where you are. Anyway, I hope you got something out of this video uh, and the previous one. If you like it, again, give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, again, please do so. Thanks again, as always, for watching, and I hope uh, this video helps you out. Take care.